Hello, I am Marcus and welcome to this new episode of EV Journey. And today we have lots of new news and new things about the ID3 First. To start with, we're going to talk about the ID3 First charging curve on our Ionity charger. Then we've actually got some information from Volkswagen on how to do good battery maintenance. Then we've got the absolutely ridiculous leasing prices for rip off Portugal from Volkswagen. Even if you're not from Portugal, you might want to have a laugh at these ridiculous leasing prices for the ID3 first. But before we start, please click subscribe below. So my last video got lots and lots of views, but not too many subscribes. So it's really going to help me out if you click subscribe below. So let's start. Electro Mobilatat website, the link is below, has managed to spot the ID3 charging at an Onity charging station at Hauptnord A3 motorway, Germany. So what do they say? Well, there were actually two ID threes charging there. Now these are not the firsts because they don't have the stickers and they don't have any of the first wheels. They don't have the wheel rims of the first, the plus or the max. So perhaps this is just a bog standard ID3 and not an ID3 first. But these must be one of the ones that 150 employees are currently testing near the factory in Germany. So they managed to get um, screenshots of all the Ionity chargers while they were doing the charging of these ID3 firsts. So let's look at the charging curve and see if the charging curve is how we expect it to be, if it's slow, if it's quick, whatever. Here is the charging curve and it's very impressive. But let's have some caveats here. So these are only prototype cars. This charging curve could be a prototype that they're still testing, but I think this will be very close to the actual ID3 first. And why do I say that? Because for the past months, if not years, Volkswagen have been testing their batteries in laboratories and they know how the charging curve should be. So they've been doing a lot of testing on the batteries. And people say this is a new electric car for Volkswagen and only Tesla know how to build electric cars. I say nincompoop to that because Volkswagen have the e up e-Golf, the e-tron and the Porsche Taycan. So they have many years of experience in batteries and electric vehicles and obviously they've been looking at how those have been used. And also the ID3 First actually comes with uh, liquid cooling and liquid heating. So because of that we should expect a good charging curve. Now look at this, it seems that charging starts at 27%. And here, the charging curve is at 100 kilowatts, up to 32%. So that's very good. And it doesn't go down in steps like we've seen with like the Peugeot uh, 208 and other electric vehicles. It goes down in a more linear curve. So between 32% and 56%, we're getting over 70% kilowatts. That's just absolutely fabulous. So the charging curve is high. Then between 70% and 71%, we're getting over 50 kilowatts. Absolutely fantastic. Then from 70% to 82%, 83%, we're getting 50 kilowatts. Then only after 83%, it starts to go down to um, 30 kilowatts. And then it goes down to 20 kilowatts, 100%. Even at 100%, 20 kilowatts, absolutely fabulous. So I guess you should consider um, charging the car up to 80%, which is what's recommended. This curve is much quicker than it's actually expecting, but they did say the ID3 first does charge at 100 kilowatts. And this seems to be the case. So I actually believe this curve is very, very realistic. And we get our ID first in September. This is what we expect to see on the Ionity chargers. Then Portugal, all the chargers are just 50 kilowatts. So I actually expect to see a flat line here around 50 kilowatts, perhaps just a little bit under, all the way up to 80%. So I'm actually predicting that in Portugal on 50 kilowatt chargers, you'll be able to charge the full 50 kilowatts up to around 80 to 83 percent which is absolutely fantastic i mean if this is true this basically beats everything in its class it will beat the zoe the e208 um the corsa e all the hyundai cars and uh, kia cars the only thing that probably be better than this is the model 3 which is more expensive 
So what I have found on Twitter is some images that do look like they've come from the Volkswagen um, manual about the ID3 first. So here they're telling you how to maintain your batteries so that the batteries last for a long time and at peak performance. So if you want to read this, just click pause in the video. Let's go on to the next page, which is a bit more interesting. So they say three golden rules for greater autonomy. So we all know that over time, the batteries start to deplete and they give less capacity than when they were brand new. But there's ways to help you stop this from happening. And the fact the ID3 first comes with a liquid cooling and heating battery management system is going to help with this problem. But there are three golden rules that Volkswagen have told us about. Please do not load your car on average with more than 80% of its capacity when using it over short distances. So never charge the car to more than 80% over short distances. If the car is not used for more than 12 hours, then it must be loaded between 30 and 80% of capacity. So if you come home and the car is 20%, you should automatically um, put it on charge so it goes to at least 30%. If you are, for example, going on an aeroplane and leaving your car at the airport, then make sure it's charged between 30 and 80%. I guess at the moment, uh, Volkswagen have lots of ID3s in fields charged to probably around 80% so the batteries don't get damaged. The third golden rule is, if you fully charge your car to 100%, Use a charge time gauge found in the charge manager and then start immediately after the car is charged. So if you charge it to 100%, get in the car and drive it straight away. Never leave it for more than one or two minutes at 100% is what it's basically saying. So they've got something here which seems amazing and apparently you get it on the eGolf. It's something to make your life easier and it's called the charge manager. This seems something that is excellent in fact. So hopefully we'll have more information about the charge manager manager when we get our ID3 first. The next page, which is a bit more confusing, so you have different types, short distance or long distance. So basically short distance is commuting, shopping, you know, daily use. Long distances are planned holiday trips, long distance motorway trips when you need more autonomy. So for short distances, never charge the battery above 80%. For long distances, you can charge it to 100%, but again, you must drive away quickly. The minimum load for short distances in the summer should be between 20% and 40% in the winter, and long distances 40%. So somebody with knee golf has told me how this works. Is So imagine that you get home with 10%, you put the car on charge and you say, I want the car at nine o'clock in the morning. So what it will actually do, it will initially charge the car to the 20% in the summer or 40% in the winter then it will stop charging and then it will charge the rest of the car so that at nine o'clock in the morning the car is charged with 80 percent so apparently that's what the Volkswagen management system does to keep your batteries tip top here basically it's saying on fast loading you should um that you shouldn't use direct current so you shouldn't use rapid chargers for daily charging so charge at home or charge on ac chargers um, you should only use dc charging on long distances and even here it's saying charging types so if you're overnight charging use ac charging so what they're basically saying is use dc chargers as little as possible only use them when you must on long distances on the motorway most of the time use ac chargers it's the last page and it's about warranty and life cycle and as we know we get um, eight years coverage of the battery up to 70%. If the car battery decreases below 70% of its initial value, then they will give you a new battery or up to 160,000 kilometers. But it also says here is um, the scope of the guarantee and the defined conditions guarantees to the customer who buys a new um, electric vehicle. So basically, this depends on the defined conditions, which they're not saying defined conditions. So perhaps this guarantee actually means diddly squat because they will find something in eight years time if your battery does go below 70%, not to give you new batteries. Let's just look at this further. So in a five year study of Model S batteries, which has full liquid cool battery management system, over a five year period, Model S is generally lost less than 10% of their initial value. So they lost 10% of their initial value after five years, where a Nissan Leaf, which has no battery management system, 
cooled by air or liquid, after a five year period, they lost 30% of their battery capacity. Volkswagen here, I believe with the ID3, unless there's big problems with the batteries on it, and there shouldn't be, will probably lose 10% over a five year period. Let's look at the battery protection system. So basically, what they have got here is the total capacity. We've just talked about this is the total capacity here of the battery. Then they've got usable capacity, which is number two. So usable capacity is what we use. So when we see 0% on the car, it's actually here. When we see 100%, it's here. So if we say uh, the car should be between 30 and 80%, it should probably should be between here and here. So this is what we can actually use. So even if your car stops, it's still got some more battery in it. And these are protections so we don't overload the battery. At three, we've got a 4% protection. So you can never use that 4%. So you can never overload the battery, which is very bad for the battery. And at number four, we've got 6% of uh, total discharge protection. So you can never, in reality, go down to 0%. So this extra, extra protection that they're giving us with the ID3, the scandalous pricing of the ID3 leasing plan in Portugal. So let's just start here. So here we have an ID3 first at 38,000 euros. Just check here, the e-golf at 42,816 euros. I think they're not going to be selling too many e-golfs now in Portugal when you look at the, the, the cheaper pricing of the ID3 first and a complete idiot would buy an e-golf currently and not go for the ID3. So if we look down here, you can see the leasing plans. I just moved that over slightly. So for the ID3 first, a car that is around 40,000 euros, it's 565 euros per month for package S. Then you've got package M and package L. Let's just forget package M and package L. Let's forget about the plus and the max because they're even more expensive. Let's just concentrate on the first 40,000 euro car or 39,800 euros, well, 40,000 euros cars. So it comes with maintenance, the leasing plan. So that comes with a complete maintenance plan. So that's good. Let's just check some caveats here. So it's a 48 month contract. So you get four year um, maintenance plan, but you can only do 40,000 kilometers. So basically this price is for 40,000 kilometers. That's 10,000 kilometers a year. Now, if you really only do 10,000 kilometers a year, you should perhaps look at getting the E up or something because a, a, a ID free first for 10,000 kilometers a year is, is, is way over spec for what you would probably need. Almost anybody who's getting ID free first will be doing over 10,000 kilometers a year. So that's the first scandal. And I probably do 25,000 kilometers a year. So this is completely inadequate for me. So you get complete maintenance for four years. So how much can maintenance be on an ID free first? Probably not much. And somebody said the first maintenance is only after the first two years. So what do they have to do? They have to check the tires, change the windscreen wipers, and there's nothing else to do in an electric car, basically. They've got travel assistance and 24 hour helpline. So I guess 24 hour helpline comes with every ID free first, even if you buy it. But I don't know what that means. And it's got travel assistance. So perhaps you break down or something. But in Portugal, any fully comp insurance cover, which probably cost you, I don't know, depends on you, but 400, 500 euros a year, that will come with travel assistance and full insurance for damage, etc. So just get a good insurance policy. So let's work this out. 565 euros a month seems hell of a lot. So if you work that out a month, over 48 months, that comes in at 27,000 euros. So at 27,000 euros, after four years, you have to give the car back. So you have spent 27,000 euros and you, over four years and you just give the car back. But the price of the car new is 40,000 euros. So if you just had 12,800 euros more, you could buy the price of the car at 40,000 euros. But no, here you have to give it back because it's leasing. Basically, if you calculate the depreciation value of the ID3 first over four years, let's say you depreciate 40%. So that means after four years, the car will be worth 24,000 euros. Second hand ID3 first are going to be sought after electric cars in four years time because there's people who are going to want to buy them. So at a 
40% depreciation value, they're going to be worth at least 20 or 4,000, if not more. So Volkswagen will get your leased car and they will sell it for at least 24,000 with probably a Volkswagen certified second-hand car. They'll probably polish it and sell it for at least 24,000. So Volkswagen here, if they lease the car, they will, will, will get from you 27,000 you'll give the car back, then they sell it for 24,000. So that means they can sell the car over a four year period for 51,000, a lot more than the 40,000 of the initial asking price. This is why Volkswagen want to lease this car. This is why they don't want to sell it. Because if they sell it to you, they sell it to you for 40,000 and they're missing out on the 51,000. So if we look at the Golf, for example, on the Golf page, there is absolutely nothing about leasing. There's nothing here about leasing on the golf page. They only are talking about leasing on the ID3 first. They want to lease them. But who's going to lease it at this price? It's absolutely ridiculous pricing. You pay 27,000 euros and you don't keep the car. Volkswagen get the car back and they buy it. So let's just say that you buy the car instead. If you buy the car for 40,000 euros, you put all the money up front and you give all your cash and you buy the car. But no, if we sell it in four years time, our purchased car and get 24,000 for it, that means over the lifetime of the car, it has cost us 16,000 euros, not 27,000 thousand euros so if you look at the monthly cost for us that monthly cost is 333 euros a month not the 566 euros a month that uh, Volkswagen are asking for in the leasing plans the leasing plan is 233 euros a month extra than just buying the car outright now if you buy the car outright for me I think I'll have a fuel saving 150 euros a month so then that brings my 333 euros down to around 183 euros per month, which makes it quite palatable. Even if you can't afford to buy the car, seriously look and get in at credit because even a credit plan is going to be worth, more worthwhile than this leasing plan. This leasing plan is a scandal. It's ridiculous. I can't actually see any of the 80 people going for this who are going to buy these cars in Portugal. This should be more around 400 euros per month, not 565. The Volkswagen in Portugal have gone absolutely crazy with their leasing plan. Thank you for watching EV Journey. I hope you enjoyed this episode and don't forget to click subscribe below and leave some comments. Thank you.